Hi, this is Jana Sullivan from Sullivan J Photography, and today I'm going to show you how to fix flower petals. We all wish we could have a perfect flower, but it always doesn't work out that way. If you still see a great composition, go ahead and shoot it and just fix the flower petal. So let's get to it. One of the things that happens when we're photographing flowers, especially when we get really close, we don't give ourselves enough room to the edge. And with this image, I feel that it needs a little bit more so it's not cropping into my main subject. So what you can do is you can add some more canvas. And to do that, it's really easy. What I would do on the right is give yourself a new layer so you're not messing with the original. Just do Command Control J and that gives you a new layer. Then what you'll do is go to Image, Canvas Size, and then this is the actual size of my image and I want to increase the height. So what I've done is added more height to this image. Below is the anchor. And what I want to do is increase the top part, which that's what this is saying. You can always change if you're not used to inches and you can change your different ways of measuring on the right here. Then you can push OK and then what will happen, it will increase your canvas at the top like you see right here. Next, you're going to use the magic wand tool. Just go ahead and click on the white and to select it. You'll see the marching ants. And then you'll go to edit, fill, make sure content aware is clicked here, and then push OK. Let Photoshop do its math, and then remove the marching ants. I like to do just Control Command D to deselect. And it's done a pretty good job, but you can see here that I have an indention. So when you have a flower that may not be perfect, but it's just a little bit off, use the Puppet Warp. Puppet Warp is perfect for small little areas like this that have petals that are just not perfect with the symmetry of the rest of your petals. So this is an indention. Maybe you have a petal that's just a little bit too large and you want to bring it in. Puppet Warp is perfect for the small little locations. Make sure you have a copy of your layer. Go to Edit and then Puppet Warp. And you'll see this grid and what you need to do is make sure that you anchor around the area you want to manipulate. This way you're not manipulating any of the image around here. I want to just give this a little bit more of a round feel, so I will just slowly play with this and say if I'm not liking it, all I have to do is click on the pin and delete it and then just go ahead and start over again. Once you like what you have, you can either push enter or the check mark. Look at this right here, and now I've got the symmetry going to the right, and so here is the before, and here is the after. So let's go ahead and go to petals that have more damage that takes a lot more than just using Puppet Warp to fix. Here's an image of a beautiful rose that was taken by Jamie Christensen, and he is the one that actually asked me, how do you fix petals? And I thought to myself, what a great tutorial because there's so many of us that photograph these beautiful flowers and there could be just one petal off that really blows the symmetry. You can see here to the right that this has lost either part of its petal, it was damaged somehow, but you have this really pretty rose and then this area just unfortunately just takes you away from the beautiful flower. So we're going to go ahead 
and make a new layer so we don't damage anything. So I'll do a control command J and we will go ahead and start working with this flower. So there's two ways that I'm going to talk about how to fix this petal over here. The first one is a way that I feel is really easy to do if it works for you. And then the next one we'll talk about more difficult issues. I want to show you real quick because in the video I'm going to work fast, but I want to show you the before and after. So this is the before and this is the after. Now we have a nice flowing flower. It doesn't break our eye when we come over to the right. The before, you kind of stop right here. But by just placing the petal or extending the petal, now we have a beautiful flower that's flowing. And let's see how I did that. I went over to this Content Aware Move Tool. And then I determined by looking at the flower what would suit this area best. And for me, it would just be easier to grab a petal that is, has some green since this is an outside petal. If, there, if it was an inside petal, I'd be looking for inside petals. So I'll go ahead and use this area and I'm really gonna go way above what I really need. It's always better to have more than less. Once I make my selection, then I go ahead and push down and I'll drop it into the location. Once I drop it into the location, I have this box and I can go ahead and play with it here by moving it around and taking my opacity to the right and bringing it down so I can line everything up the way I want it to be. And again, we'll just move quickly so you can see how I did this. Then I'll go ahead and throw the opacity back. And then once that's done, I'll just push enter. And Photoshop has taken all the information and tried to blend it as best as possible. For now, I think this is fine. So I will do a controller command D to get rid and deselect my selection. Now it kind of looks like a mess. So what I need to do is add a mask. Down at the bottom, I've added a mask. And over to the left, I'm going to paint some of the areas away. Like this right here, you can tell that it just looks funky. So let's bring in the flower petal that's below this. And then I have painted all of this in. Let's see, what's in here? Oh, actually, use the X to go back and forth. So if you want to get rid of that. I like to see what I'm working here. I usually go back and forth and paint that out. So the petal is looking pretty good. I would get in nitty and gritty in here. And then the next thing I would do is just add another layer. Over here, I would go to the left and play with my spot healing brush and just clean it up a little bit. I also will play with the clone stamp. So here's the clone stamp. And if there's something that's kind of funky and I need to fix, I'll go ahead and do that. So let's go ahead and go into an even better way to do this, but it takes more time. So I always suggest you try this first and then go into the next version of this tutorial if this doesn't work. The last part of this tutorial is a little bit more complex and more for the photographer that understands Photoshop and masking a little bit more in detail. But if you take these steps slowly and practice, before you know it, you'll be able to fix any flower petal by doing it the way I'm going to show you. This right here is the section that we have fixed. 
And by looking at this flower, you would never know that really this flower looks like this. You're going to look at what would best suit the flower petal within the composition that you have already. I'm going to go ahead and just make my selection using the marquee tool. You can use any kind of selection tool that you are comfortable with. And then I'm going to go ahead and take this area here and then I'm going to right click and then I'm going to save or add actually a copy via a layer. Click on that and to the right now I have this selection and its own layer. And the reason why I do this is because you can really manipulate this portion of the flower. I'll go ahead and do a command or control T for transform and I'm going to take this and grab the actual selection and, and bring it to the selection that I'm going to manipulate. I'll go ahead and play with this by lining it up and then of course you can take the opacity down to see what's behind and make sure it's aligned the way you'd like it to be. What's good about this is that you can take these corners and really play with your flower. And this way you can easily, I feel, change up the look of how you want this flower petal to lay against the flower petal that you're trying to fix. We're going to go through it quickly so this won't be perfect, but I'm just trying to give you an idea of what I do. We'll just do it a lot faster. Once I generally have the idea of where I want this, I'll just push enter to lock it in. And most of the time this is what's going to happen. You're going to have two different colors. And that's okay because now when you want to play with this to match the rest of the flower or this location, you're only going to be messing with this layer right here. So what I'm going to do here when it comes to flowers, usually it's the light or brightness of the flower that you want to change. So you're looking at up here image adjustment, brightness and contrast is usually what you're going to mess with and you usually will mess with hue and saturation. Those are the two things that are most of the time when it comes to the flower petals that you need to manipulate. And this one I'll do brightness and contrast. And I'm going to go ahead and brighten this up a little bit to try to match the outside of the petals that I'm looking at here. And just kind of figure out how I would like this to be. Again, quickly just do this. And if my contrast, maybe bring that down. Then I'll go ahead and push OK. What I like about having this here is that if I still feel that it's not the way I would like it to be, I can play with this and change it up here to manipulate it. Push enter. And then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to actually mask this outside area away from the flower petal. So I'll go ahead and put a mask down here below put my paintbrush on. It's already on black. And then let me get my brush size. And I'll go ahead and just start removing. And you can see that I'm getting the background, but that's not a problem. Now when it gets into these close areas, I'll give you a quick tip. What I like to do is make a selection. We'll go ahead and use the quick selection tool and I'm just going to go in here. I want to show you quickly. Now I have a selection and then in the mask I'm going to paint again and I'm not going into the flower petal as you can see or you can refine the edge here if you want to really get into the nitty gritty edges you could do your smart radius and then you can paint in here and it will really get into detail. As you can see here, push OK. And what it's done, it's refined the edges. I'm just showing this, you this quickly. So again, you can go up to refine edge at the top and 
make this even tighter. So when you paint your mask, then you won't go into the actual flower petal. Do a command control D to deselect and then just paint this stuff out. And as you can see, I haven't taken that much time to get into the nitty gritty. But another thing that is good too is if you want to change up your flower petals, this way it doesn't look exactly the same as say this one that we've taken from this other petal where we've copied. I would actually even play with this and, and change things up a little bit so um, it doesn't look exactly the same. That's something that is a good tip. And then on this actual copy layer, you could do a clone stamp and take a section here and or look at the background to see what would be interesting and start clone stamping to bring the background in and play with that that way. Always looking at your background to make sure that it looks even. So it will take some time for you to play. The next thing that I'll be doing is actually blending this middle part in. So what I'll do next is I'll go ahead and get my healing brush. And most of the time I actually use this healing brush because I want to make a selection so I can match this color in here instead of Photoshop doing that for me. I'll go back to the selection and I'm going to go in here and I'm just going to gently go through and heal this line. The next thing that I would do is blend this in. You could see this two different colors. Taking again your clone stamp and then I would bring the opacity down a little bit and then you want to go ahead and just have a soft brush and then just merge this together loosely. Always look at the flowers and to see how it's flowing so it looks natural to the rest of the image. And then once you've got it to a portion that you like you pretty much have a new petal and nobody would even know that this was fake. If you have any questions or something doesn't make sense, you can always reach me at SullivanJPhotography.com and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. Have a great day and have fun fixing your flower petals. Cheers!